This video is just to give an idea of what's involved in making a technical prop, something that's going to animate with lights and just look active. And I'll be using one of my own prop controller circuit boards for this. I, I, I used these extensively uh, initially on a television series called uh, Mission 2110 with the uh, BBC. And um, it, uh, after that, they, just, they were so useful uh, in, for other productions with not necessarily the BBC, uh, you know, other, various other production companies around Glasgow, that I ended up getting a whole batch of them made uh, because they were just a useful circuit board. So um, I'm going to be making, I, I'll show you the function of it. It's basically, it takes a PIC microcontroller. And these days, I suppose, really, you could use an Arduino, but uh, this is small and it's very low power. Designed specifically to be operated at sort of battery voltages, and it's got all the resistors built on, so it's just ideal. It's about as small as you could make it, and its sole function in life is just basically to animate lights. It's also what I call a splat circuit board uh, because you stick it down, and it's got these pads in it that are just. Um, large area pads and they're just designed to splat wires onto it. It's just designed to make it as fast as possible to connect up. Because uh, when you're making props there's usually a sort of deadline. Now this uh, is a vac form plastic housing. Uh, it's, it's a shield, a children's toy. And this is, I'm just using this as an example because uh, I don't have access to a vacuum form machine here in the Isle of Man which is a bit annoying because otherwise I'd be making more interesting stuff. But uh, this could e just as well be a fiberglass moulding. You know, it just depends on what production you're working on. Um, and in a way, if, if it was the fiberglass one, it, it would put a lot more pressure on you because you have to drill the holes and mark them out quite accurately. And when you're drilling things like fiberglass, then you have to be ultra careful because e each prop you're working on is a one-off and someone's pro potentially they spent a lot of time working on it. And if you then try to drill it and then it splits, then that's it's just, yeah, it's a bit of a can of worms, so to speak. It can be quite a quite an expensive fix, so to speak. So um, in this case, I'm just using this little plastic shield, which obviously was supposed to have a sound module in it, but didn't. And because it's got this nice fluorescent insert, I'm going to keep that. But I'm going to be uh, mounting some other LEDs, just a couple, um, underneath. Now, I have drilled this out. I marked it, uh, I just marked out where I was going to put it with a Sharpie. Um, then used a tiny pilot drill just to uh, initially drill all the holes, then a slightly larger uh, drill, and then finally the, a 5mm drill. And I chose it to be, let me grab an LED, I chose it to be a friction fit so that when I push an LED in, it's going to pretty much stay in. Uh, just makes life easier. I'm also using diffused LEDs. It depends on the production you're working on, what type of LED you'd use. Diffused is sometimes just a little bit better on camera. Although it diffuses light, although it's better suited to darker environment, uh, using the focused LEDs can sometimes cause swamping problems. You know, it just causes the camera department issues. So uh, I'm going to be doing, as I normally would in a production, I'm going to be using diffused LEDs. Other thoughts about this. Um, when you drill, uh, you're better doing those countersink, you know, not countersink, the pre-drill with pilot holes, and then gradually moving up. And also experiment, I drilled a few holes in here where it wasn't going to be seen. Experiment the material you're going to be drilling, because the last thing you want to do is find that the drill you're using snatches in and uh, bites into the plastic. So, um because that can just uh, sort of rag the edge and it can look bad. So um, just, uh, you know, practice first. Uh, even if you've got a spare bit of material, it, it helps to just uh, get that out of the way so that when you actually sit down and work on the proper uh, prop, you're not going to make a mess of it. Um, so without further ado, let's uh, make the little module up. Now, the little module has a pol polarity protection diode. I designed these originally to be operated off... Um, little packs of AA cells or plug-in power supplies. So the polarity protection diode was just a precaution against uh, the polarity being connected wrongly because that, uh, that would just not be a good thing when you've... You have to try and avoid delays in production sets. You can't... If something fails while they're filming, it can get very expensive very quickly. So... Um, that's the polarity diode in out of the way. It's the only polarity, it's the only diode in this, so the rest are just identically valued resistors. So I'm going to sit them all in at once. The resistors don't have to go round in any way in particular, uh, but I am putting them round all the same way simply because, well, you know, it's creature habit. 
Now I've said that, I'll end up putting one in the wrong way. It won't make any difference, I'll just leave it. I think it kind of looks neater aesthetically when they're on the right way, but having said that, it really is just, you know, down to your personal taste. So I'm going to do one side initially, and then I'm going to stick a bit of tape over this. The tape is to hold them in place while I solder them. This is where I try pulling it off the... Let's uh, put this little power bank here and sit it on that. This is where I just get a bit of insulation tape, but uh, if I'd been holding onto the circuit board at the same time as I was trying to unpeel the tape, this is where all the components would end up being flicked out. And I'm going to sit it over the back like that, because uh, that just makes it so much easier to solder in. So that's all the resistors locked in now. Let's uh, solder them. I find when I'm soldering, because the fumes tend to come up towards your face, that is just a, a thing about soldering, that the fumes always come towards you. I t find I tend to, just by default, breathe out slightly when I'm actually soldering. Or blow very gently and it just gets rid of, gets the fumes away from your face. It's mainly flux that's in the fumes, it's not sort of, I suppose there might be tiny quantities of lead in the fumes, but it's not that major. So when I designed the circuit board, it really was, I was uh, doing a lot of standalone props. It was a, um, on a television series that was filmed. It was a kid's show and it was kind of a spin-off of Doctor Who in some way. And it was filmed on some container ships and the, it was just difficult getting power to certain locations. And it, it just made sense to make battery-powered units that sat in the wall. But I ended up um, using these in a lot of the... Uh, other props and even in large consoles just scaled it up a bit with the same software because it creates uh, a random blinking effect. It, there were actually a few versions of the software so I'm just going to crop those leads off. A few versions of the software just to provide different effects uh, depending on the application. Looking good. So now I'm going to put the other resistors in the other side. These are all 150 ohm resistors, I think. I think they are. Oh no, these are 100 ohm resistors. The 150 I'll be using. Oh no, I was going to use 150 and I'm talking crap again. I was going to use 150 for some other LEDs that are just static on the panel. This uh, circuit board also has an output for static LEDs. Uh, it's just basically a little, a couple of pads, positive and negative just to allow the addition of uh, static lights, just to pack the panel out and for areas that shouldn't really be flashing. So in goes the last resistor. And then I'll use that same bit of tape. I say I'll use the same bit, yeah, I found it, found it. So I'm gonna put that same bit of tape over again. You can usually get off with using the same bit of tape a few times before you know, it starts getting a wee bit uh, unsticky, so um, it saves it saves a lot of hassle. It's just an easy way of putting things together. Even better if you've got a jig that holds a circuit board, but uh, for the camera, uh, I'm just holding it up here. A wee bit closer, that's why the image, the whole video is a wee bit darker initially. because I uh, set the intensity setting for filming it up here. So I've used quite a few of these, they're very good. They're just so convenient just to stick into props and to wire that they're, you know, just uh, they saved a lot of time. And because the software that I use is just generally spaceship blinking lights in this particular version, um, it, it kind of fits lots of other uh, applications, not just spaceships. Although spaceships are the main application. It could also be used just to sequence a row of lights. For the sort of, uh, in a scale model, it might be the spaceship hangar landing set of lights or something like that. Ultimately, it can be programmed to do virtually anything. Now, I've got these big pads, 
and I'm going to actually, you know what, I'm going to stick the microcontroller in uh, the socket. So let's uh, stick the socket in, and as I usually do with the socket, making sure it's the correct way around, uh, I shall solder a corner pin of diagonally opposing corners. And then I shall check that it's sitting down correctly, which, I, which it is, and then I shall solder all the rest. I'm concentrating this so much I'm not even sure if it's a... Uh... Oh yes, it is in the camera shot. Maybe I should have actually uh, kept the brightness up a wee bit. I don't know if that's looking quite dark, actually. Oh, not to worry. I've started, so I'll finish. Almost there. Oops, little splodge there. I've got a larger bit on this at the moment, just because uh, I prefer a larger tip, the chisel tip. Another thing I'm going to do, I'm going to flood solder onto these pads, uh, these uh, general connection pads. I may actually sit it down for this, because it might be easier. No, then again, maybe I won't. Yeah, I'll also need more solder shortly. When I designed this, I went for the biggest pads I could actually sort of fit in, uh, just because it does make it so much easier to tack the wires on, particularly if you're working in a cramped area. Sometimes I had to put uh, LEDs and stuff into existing sets that were, you know, they were already sort of built, and it just they hadn't really thought too much about access for the electronics in them. Okay, now I'm going to add the leads. Now, having said that, I previously, I initially when I first designed these, I designed them to be used with um, little AA battery packs with maybe like four AA's that could either be used with nickel metal hydride cells or alkaline cells. But latterly, I'm going strong in the direction of using USB power banks because it provides a rock solid. 5 volt supply, it's got all the built-in charging circuitry and of course it's got the standard connector that you you know it's very easy to swap them uh, once you've started using them and if you get a decent sized pack then you can run a prop for a modest length of time if you've got a decent uh, USB power bank so I'm just going to dump this stuff, handful of stuff I'm going to use up this rather lurid pink power lead, which nicely matches this. Well, it doesn't actually match it much at all. But, uh, I'm going to chop the end of this off. I might leave a wee short tail in that in case I need a micro USB connector. So let's uh, strip this and see what we've got in here. Ideally, just a power lead would have been nice. I don't know if this is going to be data as well. It does have the data. That's a bit annoying, but that's all right. Um, this whole uh, circuit is going to operate at very low current, so... Um, now, the other option I've got here is just to use this. Let's uh, cut the end off this one as well. Oh, this just is, uh, does just have the red and black, which uh, is maybe better. So let's just nibble around that. Now, is red going to be positive and black negative? I mean, it should be, but you just never know. So I'm just going to try that, check that right now, with the meter. So um, let's get rid of the pink lead, because uh, I, I think it's just kind of a wee bit too thin, actually. So let's plug this into a power bank. Uh, bring the meter in. Uh, set it to about 20 volts. And it's displaying positive 5 volts, so red is the positive. That's good. Saves any, well, I was going to say saves any unfortunate polarity instance, but of course I've got the polarity protection diode to protect against that. 
Now, the question is, can I get the whole thing through that hole? I put a, a strain relief hole in this, but um, I think I'll just put the individual cores through. I won't try putting the whole cable through because I don't think it's going to fit. That's all right. So the positive is the one that's uh, going to be polarity protected. So it's going to the uh, diode. So that will go quite literally splat onto that lead there. Let's try and shape it a bit first. And the negative will go up to these common negative pads here. So I'll put it in the one closest to... Actually, will I? Yes, I will. I will put it on the closest. They're just common together and they're the common negative. Let's crop that one down a bit. Okay, so that's the module complete apart from the chip. Here's the chip. Let's uh, stick the chip in right now, in fact. The other things, before I stick that in, I'm going to actually put a couple of leads in. I'm going to put the uh, positive that goes out to the LEDs and the negative. Now, the LEDs have a common positive going out to them. Um, Simply because uh, it was the way the pick works, it was actually just it was easier for me to switch them down to negative. It can make, it can drive the pins output pins positive or negative, but um, it was just had uh, it meant I was going to get an extra pin if I just drove them all uh, negative instead, because one of the pins can't uh, drive positive; it can only drive negative. On oh, the pick, uh, this is a pick sixteen F six two seven A, I believe. So let's say. Uh, Strip the negative and the positive. More solder. And the negative is going to go on to this common negative contact over here, next to the uh, one from the USB power bank. So it doesn't matter if it shorts onto that other pad because it is the same connection. And uh, this red wire will go onto the common positive coming out from the uh, protection diode. And I'm going to feed them through that hole. It acts as a sort of strain relief. It was just a. It made sense when I was designing it to put a little bit of strain relief into the unit because uh, props have a terrible life. They have a really rough life, rough, rough life on a set. So that's uh, all the wires in. I can I can stick the chip in now. So uh, this is a chip lead former. It simply squeezes the uh, pins together to make it easier to insert. I just thought I'd mention that because, uh, well, because it's there and. Someone will inevitably ask what it's for. And that's the control module done. Right, so now I'm going to uh, probably, I'm going to start putting the LEDs into this. And what, what I'm going to be doing here, uh, I'll initially start and then I'll go into sort of um, time lapse just to make it a wee bit faster. So I'm going to put the warm white LEDs around the outside. And I'm going to put the positives uh, all facing out the way and fold the leads out. So that means I'm going to run a common, uh, probably a bare wire, round all the positives. So I'm going to just start putting them in um, like this. And then I'll probably, just to save you guys getting too bored, I'll switch to time lapse. Okay, that's all the LEDs pressed in now. Looking quite good so far. Uh, now, 
I'm going to use a bare wire, just because it's a lot easier to do it this way, to make the common positive. I'm going to run it round all the positives of the LEDs, including the ones that are just static in the middle. And I'm also, for the ones that are just static, that don't have the benefit of the resistor on the circuit board, I'm going to add a resistor in the line with the lead. And I've arranged them so that all those uh, leads and resistors will pretty much come into a common central position, which should just make it that little bit easier. So... I'm going to start by trying not to mix this solid core wire up with the solder, which I occasionally do, and solid core wire doesn't melt that very well. And I'm going to start probably by about here by just flowing some solder onto these leads initially. Then I'll just put a slight curve in this wire so it kind of holds its shape better as I solder it. And I'm going to time-lapse this again because it does, you know, it, it takes a surprise amount of time. It doesn't seem a long time for me, but it will seem a long time for you guys who are watching it. So, um, that's the first connection done. Run the wire across and then make the second connection. And this is where you have to be careful, not, if you get them very close to each other, you have to be careful the heat doesn't travel on the copper wire and uh, melt the solder in the adjacent ones. Now, it's worth mentioning at this point in time, I like to leave the LED leads as long as possible because it takes the thermal stress off them. So I will be cropping these down afterwards, but while I'm soldering them, I like to just leave a good length and solder well away from the LED. So let's uh, do this in a more accelerated fashion now. So now the common positive bus bar that's going around all the LEDs is in, and the resistors for the uh, static LEDs here, I'm now going to incorporate the electronic module. Now, the, I've put some layers of double-sided tape in this. Double-sided tape is quite important uh, material in the prop industry, either for use as a permanent attachment or as a temporary attachment while stuff cures or sets. So I've built it up so I can fit it in here and just hopefully just press it down. Hopefully it will stick properly like this. Okay, looks promising. The resistors that it's actually sitting on, the double-sided tape, don't get hot in use, so that's uh, okay. And I'm going to uh, connect uh, this positive lead up to, to the positive uh, bus bar on either side, uh, and the black lead, which do does the common negative to the static LEDs, will go down to this connection down here. But in the meantime, uh, I'm now going to switch back to the... Um, I was going to say stop motion, it's not stop motion, it's time lapse. And I'm going to be soldering all the, uh, the wire links into the LEDs. So, for instance, I'm going to be using uh, yellow wire for this, just for, just for visual difference. So I'll, I'll solder one of them, and then I'll switch into the time lapse. So the first one I'm going to solder is the one that's closest to the controller. And it's this one down here. I'm going to tin its lead. I've pre-tinned the leads of this uh, bit of wire. I'm going to flow them together. And then just tuck it round onto its pad. And this is why I call them the splat pads. And then just splat it on. It just makes it so easy to connect it onto this uh, unit. And now I shall do the others with the yellow wire in the same style, and also connect the bus bars. So that's all the wires attached, and I've also remounted the uh, fluorescent panel, which is held on by two small screws at the back. And it's time to give it a test. So I'm just going to plug it into A 
USB power port. All the blue LEDs have lit. I'm just going to check all the white ones are doing their stuff. They're warm white, by the way. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, if this was an actual prop, it would be there'd be some extra strain relief added. There'd be hot melt glue put over our LEDs and stuff to stop them getting smashed in because props have a rough life. Also, um, the cable uh, here for the power supply would be uh, secured to stop it being dragged out accidentally and pulled off, although it does have some strain relief in here. So this can now be powered either directly from a you know standalone on a power bank or from a typical USB charger. And the end result looks like this. Now I may have to, uh, you can still see it, but I may have to uh, tame the lighting down a bit because um, it's currently under, directly under some bright lights that are kind of bouncing off it a lot. So I'll just uh, pause and uh, just uh, adjust the lighting on that. There we go. That's maybe just a little bit overly dramatic, slightly swamped out, but that's okay. It shows that the fluorescent uh, colour, the blues in particular, they always swamp cameras, but the fluorescent colour looks pretty good. I can see the blues hovering behind the plastic, but all the plastic has lit that fluorescent green and the warm whites are visually very bright to the human eye here. They're, they're very good. Um, they're running approximately, I'd guess, about 15, 10 to 15 milliamps each. And the blues are probably running uh, just a little bit more, just for extra oomph, because they're a duller colour. So yeah, uh, that's a, a good result. It uh, looks quite stylish. I'm almost tempted to actually mount that on a wall now, particularly given that it can be powered from a USB port. You'll notice that uh, the LEDs aren't just flashing on and off. They're actually doing quite a random pattern. It is a randomizer that's controlling that. And it's also set up so that always 50% of them are on at any one time. So yeah, uh, good result.